All right, let's change some spark plugs. It's for 4.7 Chrysler engine V8. These on top, one, two, three, four on one side. There's the other four on the other side. What we're gonna do is first take this intake and hose off to get it out of the way. It's held on really simple. We just take this clamp off. The clamp back here, right here. And then there's two bolts. One is right there. The other is just right over here. That's all it's going to take to get that off, and then we can get to the spark plugs. You can use either a screwdriver or a nut driver or a wrench on this part. See how easy it comes off. Same thing with the back. Down a little. Off the bottom. Alright, I am using a 10 millimeter wrench to get this off. Alright, the other side is going to be the same. As you can see, once you get this out of the way, it makes it a lot easier. I'm using a 4 inch extension. I guess it's probably 4 inch, maybe 5 inch. Try to 2 inch, it'll work. If that's all you got, but. Having a longer one gets it past that hose. Alright, now we just got to take off the intake. need to get the wire off. Screwdriver, easy clip, make sure it's got another. It's probably a mass airflow sensor. go. Ta-da! There she is. Let's see if this bends around the corner. It's more for looks than anything else. Alright, next step, let's get the wires from the coil packs out of the way. Again, it's another 10 millimeter, makes it easy. All stays the same size. Don't lose the nuts. You want to do this for all eight cylinders. Where'd you get the idea? To get to these back ones, might need uh, some special wrenches. 
I have uh, picked this up for about 20 bucks. The best thing ever. This bendable neck will save you. It will, it will, it will. Let me show you why. If I try to do this straight, you can see it's just right down on top of everything. Yeah, I can get it done. But, just by cocking it once, get to this back one, all of a sudden, it becomes a whole lot easier. You can see the guy that did it last, was it me, did not use it, did not tighten very well, it's probably because he couldn't reach it. So, anyways, you get an idea. Tools help get the right tool for the job. All right, next step, you just want to pull the cap off here. Careful with your wires, don't want to pull them too hard. It's a good thing to, while it's out, go ahead and inspect everything. You want to look for cracks. If you have detonation things, uh, you're detecting funny. I haven't heard much about these engines, but this pretty much can be a culprit. Uh, I know it happens a lot on Fords. So once that's out, you want to get your spark plug. These should be gapped 40 thousandths. Get your little wheel like this, if you don't have one, and it'll tell you exactly where it's supposed to be. So 40 thousandths, and you should be able to get, get it in there right at 40 thousandths. That's a cheap way of doing it. If you have the right tools, get your feeler gauge, and see if you can fit it in there 40 thousandths. We're good to go. It fits in there snug, so that's exactly where you want to be. Next, you want to take out your old plug. Something's in there. Got this out. By the way, if you don't have one of these, get a. Uh, let's see if I can see this. Get a wrench that has a or a socket that has a piece of foam in it. They make these special for spark plugs because it'll grab it. Because otherwise, you got to fish it out or get a magnet. But I know I'm going to catch flat because I bought Auto Light, not Champion. But maybe we'll have to do it later. Anyways, that's before and after. These, God, I've put like. 30,000 miles on these almost, 25,000. So we'll see how these auto lights do. If these don't work, then I'll get some champions. Basically just screw it back in. When you go to put another one on, you see a little part down there that the liquid shoots through. I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on it. That's done, so now I gotta repeat that on the other seven.